This podcast is brought to you by Primary Intelligence, the leader in win-loss analysis, focused on helping businesses uncover the unique story on how each sales rep can win more deals. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me on another rousing edition of Sales Intelligence Weekly, brought to you by Primary Intelligence. I'm Ryan Queller. So strategic alignment throughout your organization is crucial right? Just crucial to increasing win rates. Now, in a previous episode, we explored specifically how to create alignment and end the battle, the ever loving battle between sales and marketing. But when it comes to strategic revenue operations, alignment goes well beyond that. In today's episode, we're going to explore strategic alignment in B2B organizations from the top down. Let's talk about why the misalignment occurs, when it happens, how can you identify it quickly? How can you create strategic alignment within your organization between all customer centric departments? Okay. And, and I know listeners out there know that I am somewhat excitable. Um, we have HubSpot in the house today. Okay. Can, can I just say that for We have HubSpot in the house. Ex super excited to have uh, one of my very favorite organizations on the planet, HubSpot. Talking with me today is Revenue uh, Operations Leader, SVP of Revenue Operations, Sid Kumar. Sid, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Ryan. Excited to be here. Absolutely. So before we get into the meat of our conversation, tell us a little bit about you, your journey, right? And yeah. a little bit about HubSpot. Sounds great. Yeah, I've been at HubSpot for about, uh, about six months now. Super excited to be here. Um, just really, really enjoying it. Um, I lead uh, our revenue operations team across what we call our flywheel, which is, uh, you know, our marketing, sales, and customer success organizations, and how do we bring those together uh, to really align with our go-to-market organizations. And um, I joined here from AWS, where I was for about three and a half years, and there I led uh, field sales operations and helped launch something called the Cloud Sales Center, which was a high-velocity go-to-market model for AWS as we were moving um, into mid-market and, and broader enterprise with a, with a higher velocity model. Uh, and then prior to that, I was at uh, CA Technologies for about uh, 13 years. And um, you know, two parts of my time there, the first half was, I would call it traditional uh, finance strategy operations. The back half of my time was really interesting. It was during that period of time when companies were making that transition from on-premise to SaaS and off of legacy to cloud and got to play some really interesting roles there, um, building out some, some new go-to-market models as we were um, digitally transforming our go-to-market model. Along I, I, gotta, I gotta interrupt you here. I read yeah. on your LinkedIn page, it yeah. wasn't just interesting, you're downplaying this, dude. You, you went from zero to like, was it like 300 uh, people in your, in your digital sales team in, I don't know how many months, but I mean, that's crazy growth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was all around creating that, you know, the digital building a digital sales and digital engagement model across the customer journey as we were trying to go down market, mid market and create that higher velocity, but engaging set of touch points for customers. And we were traditionally very heavy in the enterprise, didn't have as much built out in that mid market. And that was quite a journey, um, you know, yeah, 30 months from zero to 300 people um, globally. So it was, uh, it was a pretty wild ride. I think I was on, uh, you know, Delta almost <laughs> every couple of weeks going yeah. some part of the world. Diamond member, Sid, he's got, he's got his own chair. Don't worry <laughs> about it. You know, that's yeah, great. great. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show, my friend. All right, let's, let's get into this, this conversation, all right? So let, let's start with some basics. As a RevOps leader, what customer-centric teams are you focused on aligning, right? Yeah. No, it's a great question. When you think of you know, RevOps, you think of who are the teams that create revenue, and it's really not limited to that. It really is bringing that, that unification across the go-to-market teams, first and foremost. It's, it's marketing sales, customer success. And within that, we have our a success pillar services and support. So really think about it as every organization that is going to touch the customer at some point in their customer journey, it's bringing that unification, that consistency of engagement 
And candidly, that um, that making it feel for the customer that it's one organization engaging with them, as opposed to multiple different sub functions within an organization. So that's that's one piece of it. But the other really important piece of this, and the model that we're in, that is so product uh, driven, and and very much about usage of of our capabilities, it's that alignment with product, and working very closely. So there's a a two way uh, you know, a constant closed loop between us and our product team, which we call a pillar as well, uh, working really closely on understanding customer needs, making sure that's captured, fed into product, and then, you know, correspondingly making sure that value chain between product and go to market is tight and, and a closed loop. And then, of course, working really closely with our, what we call our company pillar, which is our um, partners in uh, people operations and finance. Uh, and, and other parts of um, the, the company just help keep us all connected and moving in the right direction. So, so a massive group. Okay, so with, we're talking about Cusper Centric's team. Uh, your organization, HubSpot, takes this to a whole new level. I mean, product, I, I understand why product is included in customer centric, but many organizations would exclude them from customer centric organizations, specifically as it, as it pertains to, you know, focusing on the rev ops. Why, why product? Tell me more about that. Yeah. So just to be clear, I mean, rev ops specifically is aligned to our go to market organizations, which we call our flywheel, but a big part of what we try to do is really stay very closely aligned from our go to market teams with product. Um, I, I, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, HubSpot is all about that, getting customers to try and understand what that experience is and starting with our different editions of software, using it in a, in a premium context, getting value out of it, and then expanding with us as and when it makes sense for that customer based on where they are from a maturity perspective or where they want to start from a hub perspective. So that interplay between product and go to market is, is really tight and, and candidly very, very uh, important for us to maintain that connection between both teams for that very reason. So we're saying acutely focused on, are we solving for the customer? And we actually have that as one of our, you know, um, core tenants is SFTC, solve for the customer and grounding everything we do in how we're solving for the customer. And if we can't articulate what that is and how we're solving for the customer, we should really rethink or reshape that initiative or um, that, that objective to make sure it's really grounded in making our customer experience better and helping our teams on the product and go to market side being more effective and being able to deliver for that. That makes sense? Oh, yeah, totally. So, and, yeah. and I really appreciate the solve for the customer, right? So you yeah. talk about customer centric. If you use that as your lighthouse, uh, you know, on the shore that you're trying to navigate your product and your organization and alignment towards that would be the lighthouse. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I think most of the listeners on the, on the, in, you know, that, that, that listen to our show can probably surmise, surmise and, and also um, probably already buy into the idea in the, of the value of alignment between different organizations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. However, Let's talk about the boogeyman. Let's talk about like the Baba Yaga, right? The Chupacabra, the, the Yeti, the, 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 the shadows in the closet. Let's talk about the misalignment. Okay. So, so how does misalignment manifest itself between teams in a B2B organization that's, that has the full intention of being yeah. customer centric? Yeah, I think it's, it's a great question. And, uh, you know, I share a little bit of my, my journey earlier with you, you know, both at, you know, at CA. At AWS and now at HubSpot, and I, and I think there's a there's a common theme. I think it's it, it's really thinking if you think about the customer journey as the unifying framework or model, and then you think about functions that align to that customer journey, and you think about what are the handoffs, what are the roles and responsibilities, what are the handoffs, and what defines success at each of those different points in the context of solving for the customer, then I think you start to um, chip away at a lot of those misalignments that, that may be there. So oftentimes to answer your question, where are the misalignments? It's a converse of that, which is where are, is there a lack of clarity around what our common objective or goals are? And, uh, and then how are the KPIs or input metrics, whatever you might call them, 
are they aligned in terms of solving for that set of customer objectives? And revenue is, is, is an output of, we're doing everything right in terms of solving for the customer and helping achieve, you know, in, in our context, helping millions of customers grow better. We're helping our customers do that and helping them engage with their customers in a more efficient way. Then that'll ultimately translate to um, us being successful. So I, I, I think it does go back to that, you know, that North Star of solving for the customer, you know, and, and thinking about how does each organization across the go-to-market or the product or any organization in the, in the company anchor back to solving for that? And then how do you find those common points of linkage between a marketing, a sales organization and a customer success organization? And, you know, I think HubSpot's really taken a, a pretty um, bold leap forward, you know, back in, uh, you know, 2018, bringing all these organizations that touch go to market under one organization. We have a chief customer officer, um, you know, led by Rob Gilio, who started earlier this year. Uh, so those three pieces of the go-to-market organization are under one leader. And I think that is, is really been a game changer, I think, for us in terms of anchoring everything back to the customer and then thinking about how do each of these functions align and deliver value in that context? And then what are the linkages between each of them? And then I think what that helps us really think about is you, think, you anchor this on the customer journey, where are the disconnects? Where are the dropped packets per se? And, and then how do we continue to work and get better and better over time? So I go back to customer journey and you anchor around that at a horizontal level versus indexing on a functional level. And I've seen that play out in, in really all three of the experiences I've had where there have been disconnects. That's been the way I've uh, really gone about is thinking horizontally and working backwards from how is the customer experiencing each of those different go-to-market functions. Okay. So when you've done, you know, when you've seen the, the fingerprints, the, the, the artifacts, if you will, of the misalignment, what have you seen as you've looked back, right? How do you, how do you identify that? Hey, we have a problem. There's, there's, there's trouble in, in, in river city. You know, how, how do we, how do we know this? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. I think if there's alignment around, if there's not alignment around what the North star is, what are the set of objectives or output metrics that we're all trying to achieve? that are sort of an embodiment or a measurement. If it's MRR, if it's ARR, number of new customer logos, whatever that might be for the organization. If they're, those are almost like second order from if you do what's right by your customers, then you're gonna, these are gonna be you know, outputs of that which define success for your company. I think clarity around those, number one, is, is, the, is, is, is sort of paramount. And then I think it's tying those output metrics to specific functional input metrics along the customer journey that drive, you know, or advance different pieces of that, um, of those objectives at, uh, you know, across like our attract, engage, delight. There's going to be different metrics at different stages of the customer engagement and, and being clear on what those are and what's the connection point between functions as they get hand off, hand off between one, one, one organization to the other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally following this. This is excellent. So, um, you know, when, again, we're still talking about human beings, uh, you know, yeah. for, for better, for worse, right? Um, in, in our experience, both in my experience, both as a leader, uh, organizational leader, and also in our research that we do with win-loss analysis, we will often find that people have two sets of criterion when they're deciding on whether or not they're going to align to it. They have the on spreadsheet standard set of criteria, right? Does it, does it meet this, 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 do I understand this, this, then this, they might check all those boxes, yeah. but then they have the off spreadsheet stuff, right? This is the stuff that is a, uh, an amalgamation of their experiences, right? It's a culmination of, of what they've gone through in their life, either personally, professionally, or all of the above. Yeah. Um, and, and it drives different behaviors, right? And, and it drives to this model. It's very basic. I, I've not, I'm not the creator of this model. Uh, it, it was popularized by Franklin Covey. It's see, do, get, right? How yeah. we see the world drives our behaviors, 
yields a net result. Yeah. So long of the short of the whole thing is, um, how do you identify the off spreadsheet issues? Like what are, what are some of the things that might manifest in various teams that aren't the, Hey, this fits that this is not this KPI isn't being hit. Oh, we might have a problem. Like how do you identify those off sheet issues? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. I mean, data tells you one side of the story, but I think it's, it's, it's really having those uh, very candid conversations and uh, with those with those different teams, look for where are the points of misalignment when you get really down to the ground level. And when you think about, you know, reps that are day in and day out working to go close deals, it goes back to incentives, right? Are, are incentives aligned across the different teams, top to top to bottom in the organization? And then I think um, as important is, is, is there a common definition of um, and, and a way of getting people to feel like they're winning together, you know, and that's so important. It's, it, it's a, it's a nuance to that point around North star, North star, maybe a set of metrics, but is there a mission that is so energizing and is larger than any one function in and of itself that gets people so energized and so excited. And for, for me, um, and for HubSpot, that is, Helping millions of customers grow better is so it, it's so inspiring to me because you think about also that combined with the target market we're going after SMBs. You know these are organizations that need our help. They are trying to get digitally savvy and get get online and have rich and engaging customer experiences with their end customers, but they don't have the budgets of you know the the, the, the customers that are much larger and, and in the Fortune 500, right? So that mission, and then hearing and seeing some of these stories about how HubSpot has been integral to transforming the lives of small business owners and, 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 and their employees, their families, their communities is uh, candidly pretty, pretty inspiring. And I think that's been a very big part of, that's a unifying mission across HubSpot, across our, um, you know, our organization that every organization with sub organization and pillar can, I think, find a connection and hook to. And if we all agree with that. Then it's like, what's the part we're going to go play? And if there are disconnects, they're always going to be. How do we identify them and determine which ones matter? How about impact? Which ones do we just, you know, do you live with because they, they don't matter? And aren't going to make a material difference either to the customer experience or to the outcomes we're trying to drive. So you just said something that kind of broke my head. Um, and I, I want to unbreak my head because yeah. I, I don't have much <laughs> I left. I want to break your head. I want to break your head. That wasn't <laughs> okay. my... thank, thank you. I appreciate that. My, my <laughs> wife will appreciate it as well. Maybe even my children. I don't know. That's another story. Um, but you just said something where you said these words, transform people's lives yeah you just talked about being a human being right you just talked about a person talk caring for thinking about maybe even obsessing about the the impact of your product your organization on a human's life yeah why i mean that that is so different than many businesses that 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 we see out in the marketplace why why i mean i get this i'm in yes to this but i want to hear your perspective why this i it it is that broader sense of purpose right i think what i think the past couple of years has has uh, has taught us is you know being aligned with organizations that have a broader sense of purpose have a you know strong cultural values which which is also something that I find HubSpot really being leading on. You know, when we think about heart, those are our cultural values, humble, empathetic, adaptable, remarkable, transparent. And it's embodied across the organization. And it's, it's how we operate. We think people first. Um, and then, yeah, we, we are selling a capability. We're selling technology. We're selling services. But it's in the context of driving an outcome. And the outcome is you know transformative to people's lives and that's a much bigger purpose than than technology right it's what is that technology enabling you know millions of 
um, SMBs to be able to go do if they get on this get on this journey. And and it's really helping them get on that journey and then providing them support. It's not just about software. It's about all the other capabilities around um, you know, education, enablement, um, thought leadership, content. So there's so much that we we are trying to do to just give them content and value, you know, free of charge so they can understand where they are on their journey and go at their rate and pace. It's very much the philosophy around inbound. So I, I want to bridge another gap here. You've, you've got the wheels turning. My head is unbroken. You've helped glue Humpty Dumpty back together. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, so uh, I want to, I want to, I want to go a little further. So having a purpose that's meaningful, right? A yeah. meaningful, like helping people, helping SMBs, which frankly can't afford lots out there in the marketplace, can't, can't don't have the, the resources from a human perspective, a, a you know, revenue perspective or, or time perspective. You got leaders that are wearing multiple hats. It's, it's a whole thing. You're, you're, you're trying to impact and, and transform these smaller organizations. Inside of companies, so coming back to the idea of this alignment between customer-centric teams, yeah. um, having this North Star, this lighthouse, this, this meaning is imperative. Um, but it feels like there's, there's another thing that's an undergirder of this. And that is once we have an understanding, this, this agreement on the direction that we're headed, there, there's got to be a level of trust, like a significant level of trust in order for this to even work. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on how trust impacts the ability to align customer centric departments. Oh, it's so paramount. I mean, it's a great question. I think it is the underpinning of, of, of all of this. And I think, you know, underneath trust is assuming positive intent, right? And I think if you start with the assuming positive intent, we're, we're all here to, um, to do a great job for our customers. And we all play different roles in making that happen. And um, there are naturally going to be, and expecting there's going to be disconnects and disagreements. And um, I think there's a sense of, if, you can, if we can be candid, open and transparent, again, which goes back to our heart value, right? Being transparent and open and candid with each other doesn't mean we all have to agree. It means that we're gonna get all of the issues on the table and, and then there's you know, maybe um, a, a, somebody that's gonna help break that tiebreaker if there is one or differing points of view, but then we agree to disagree. And, and then we go commit to that decision and, and move on. That's very much a part of our culture is um, you know, being very um, transparent. It, and the T is a really big one for us and, and adaptable. I think this world that we're in is moving so fast and changing so dynamically that you may have had a very strong held point of view that may need to change and adapt to the way the world is going, the way our customers are evolving. So I think that that trust is around, can you be adaptable? Can you be transparent? Um, and can you, can you think, um, can you think, can you, can you, are you okay being challenged on your opinion? And we, foster that culture here of, um, of a very, and then doing that in a very human way, collaborative way. And I think you have the mix of those ingredients. And I think the trust really starts to uh, come out of that. It's, it's how do you obtain that trust? I think heart plays a big, big part in that. Because it's such a, it's a, it's so easy to say you need trust. Like who's, like who's going to disagree with you on that? No, no one, not, not a single person, not a single person, but then it's like, how do you embody a culture that, you know, that fosters and drives trust. And I think that's the hard part and, and create that as part of the aura and the culture of your organization. And that's what that was. So okay. How we do it here. Cooking with gas, my friend. So <laughs> no, nobody argues, ah, you know, we don't need trust. We, I, I, I don't like that guy. I'm not going to work I mean, with I that guy. I haven't heard anybody that's actually that never said that to me. No. Yeah. But but the, the big question is how, right? So I, I and I don't want to spend time right now talking about the how do we create the trust, but I do want to talk about this. Yeah. And trust is broken, right? Mm -hmm. and, and invariably it will be, even with the people that have the greatest of intentions, 
the most loving relationships, you're going to break trust. You're going to break trust. That's just what happens. We're human. This is how life works in an organization like this, where everybody might again, have the best of intentions aligned towards the, the right North star. Everybody's doing the thing. Trust will still get broken as a leader. How, what can revenue leaders specifically do to fix misalignment and broken trust? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think RevOps um, is a relatively new discipline, you know, and something that we've really taken a um, big leap forward in at, uh, at HubSpot in not just bringing the flywheel together, but bringing marketing sales and, and uh, customer success operations under one team, which is what I, what I lead. We play a big role in driving the horizontal connections with those organizations and identifying where there are gaps and um, you know areas of misalignment, candidly. And I don't know if I would go so far as to say trust is broken, but there are points of misalignment, right? I think if you go back to assuming positive intent, which is very much how we, we think of things with, with heart, I'm not saying there can't be examples of it, but if you assume positive intent and two organizations are, are, are working uh, opposite to each other or in conflict with each other, and I think it's about understanding what is there an objective or incentive misalignment? And that's often where it is. It's either lack of clarity around what that North Star is or uh, lack of clarity around how the work that needs to be done contributes to that. Okay. And that's often where I see the, the conflict or there's overlapping responsibilities where there's not enough, or there's a communication breakdown. There's another part of it, right? So a lot of times I see, you know, and this isn't specific to HubSpot, but like wherever I see a communication breakdown, there, there usually is a duplication of work across teams that don't have extreme clarity around role and responsibility. That is so important. Clarity around roles and responsibilities. There's always going to be a little bit of gray and there may be some overlap, but is it conscious overlap? And is, is it clear what, you know, to use swim lanes as an analogy, like, is, are, are the swim lanes clear? And if they're not, then you're not putting your team in a position to be successful because there's that, that the, the lack of clarity around swim lanes, around roles and responsibilities, shared definition of success, if that doesn't exist, it's going to create that environment of misalignment and potentially lead to mistrust around intentions when that probably wasn't anybody's and, you know, no one's coming into work thinking they want to have a distrustful relationship with another party. It's just something along the way has led to that. And it's, it's a leader's job. I think RevOps plays a really big role in helping like think that think across the horizontal uh, while there is that functional alignment and depth. How do you elevate above that? Think solve for the customer horizontally and then make sure everybody's aligned within the functions and, and working together to, to maintain that trust and alignment. Okay. So, so how does revenue intelligence play into this horizontal connective tissue and helping drive that, that kind of trust, that kind of transparency? How, how does it play? Yeah. I mean, data is, is really fuel <laughs> for, for us. Um, I mean, we, we are in the type of business we're in, which is very high velocity enterprise sales. We, we, we collect a lot of data about our customers, about our prospects across different, um, across the different uh, elements of the, or stages of the, of the customer journey. And we are very anchored in data, transforming that to analytics insights, and then what set of actions we wanna go drive from that. And the more intelligent we can be with the data we, we, we collect, and, and the analysis and the insights we want to glean from it, the more thoughtful we can be about what are the right set of actions we want to take as a company, and uh, you know, in the spirit of improving that that uh, our performance and, and our customer experience, and um, and what, so what are the what are the decisions we want to make? What are the actions we want to take? So it's it's really thinking about what's what are the set of questions we're trying to answer, and what are we going to, are we going to go do with that answer? Are we going to it, or do we have a hypothesis we want to go test around a market opportunity? Or do we think there's an opportunity to do something better to improve NPS or customer experience? 
experiments you can run, but very, very much um, data data driven in terms of how we, we think about it and start. So you brought up another episode. We'll have to have you on for round number two about design thinking, about thinking about how we think. You know, that's yeah. a that's like that that's a whole other thing. So I want to I want to go a little bit further. You've mentioned strategy in, or communication gaps. And I want to talk about go to market strategy. So in in our work here at PI, we help product marketers leverage the voice of the customer to create winning go to market strategies. Right, that's one of the things we do. Yeah. So how does this go to market strategy get communicated to other teams that are customer centric across the organization so that the customer journey feels seamless? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I think, um, you know, product marketing plays an essential role uh, in just really understanding what are the capabilities, the requirements, needs of our customers working with our, it's a bridge between product and the go to market function. And um, understanding why we win or why we, we don't win is really important because it gives us lots of clues into where we could um, do things better. Uh, the, the linkage that I, that I think is probably the most direct linkage is, is our enablement team. And our enablement team sits within RevOps. It's, um, you know, we, part of RevOps is uh, the, the team I, I lead, which is operations and go-to-market strategy. I have a colleague of mine, Sasha Decker, who leads the enablement function across our flywheel organizations. That's all about how do we make sure the individuals and teams that are talking with our customers each and every day have you know message that is highly on point and resonates with the pain points that and and what we're trying to solve for for our customers and uh, leveraging multiple different formats and ways of engaging those 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 individuals to absorb and and really be um, you know proficient in being able to tell that that value based story to our customers. Okay. So winding our conversation, by, by the way, this is, this has been just a phenomenal conversation. Thank you for the insight, the insight and the thoughtfulness for which you're, you're coming at this. Um, I'm walking away feeling kind of enthused about the general population, right? So it's like the, 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 the customer centric, the human nature of business yeah. doesn't necessarily need, doesn't detract from the ability to get stuff done. No. Right. I, I, no. I, I love this. Okay. So it actually makes it a lot easier, I would say. Okay. Tell me why. Tell me why. It, because if you're anchored on that human connection, it intrinsically is, is more of an emotional connection and gives you that energy, that excitement, that willingness and desire to want to go make it happen. And then, then it becomes less of a separation of, you know, work and, you know, personal, right? It's just, they start to blend. Mm. bring your true self to work true okay i yeah uh, we have a third episode now we need third to episode, perfect I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. Calendar. <laughs> <laughs> all right my friend so winding down last question for well possibly the la i'm a liar i typically say last question for you and then there'll be two or three uh, follow-ups right. but let, let's start with this yeah. you know if, if you were going to give our listeners you know one piece of advice to creating strategic alignment between customer centric teams you know, what is the, the, the single play, what's a starting point or a single point of advice that you would give them? Yeah, I, I'll go back to something that we talked about before, simplicity, right? I think it's, it's um, really getting crisp and clear on what is that North Star? What are we collectively as an organization trying to achieve and how do we define success? And then in the simplest manner possible, identifying how each organization within the, within the company or within the go-to-market organization is tying into that. And a handful of metrics, not a laundry list, simple, you know, and I have this way of thinking about, you know, the, the, there's this inherent, you know, notion when you think of data that there's gotta be a lot of it. And I actually think about it a little bit differently. I mean, yes, more data may be better, but then you have to go dig deeper into the data to go find the analytics and insights. But I, I think it's this notion of simplicity scales and if you can clearly understand that the marketing organization defines, looks at its business through these three lenses, and these are the, the different aspects of marketing, and these are the KPIs, one or two, that define success. And here's how they tie to that success metrics. And then we go do that with sales. We go do that with customer success. And there's a shared understanding. 
it, it just makes it a lot easier to be able for the other pillars to be able to understand and say, here's how I can contribute to sales success if I'm not in sales. I understand what they're, what they're trying to achieve and how that connects to the same mission that I'm trying to get to. And then you start creating that horizontal teaming and alignment. Does that make sense? hundred uh, percent. Folks, you heard it here first, simplicity scales. Sid, my friend, thank you for the time, man. This, this was a great conversation. Uh, we may tap you on the shoulder again in the future to come back to talk about the true self, right? We'll get, I got a couch. We can, you know, have a like psychology session. It's a whole thing. Perfect. That's, that's perfect. I have a fireplace right here. So <laughs> that's, fine. that's yeah. right. Maybe we'll have a happy hour and sit and chat about that. Sid, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation, Ryan. And listeners, for more from our friends at HubSpot and from us here at Primary Intelligence, check out the show notes at www.primary-intel.com forward slash podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And remember, no deal is out of reach. We'll see you next time.